One warning. That's it. You gave me one. You may have seen the videos on social media. Stay down, man. Stay down. Or experienced it firsthand. Oh, seriously. According to airlines, the Association of Flight Attendants (CWA) union and the FAA, disruptive, unruly, and violent passengers have become a serious problem. Last year, the FAA reported a record high number of unruly passenger reports. Although incidents have fallen since spiking earlier in the year, today's rate remains above pre-pandemic levels. This past year, starting at the beginning of 2021, has been the most difficult and consistently dangerous time in our careers. We have been <laughs> kicked, punched, uh, spit at, uh, had trash thrown at us, and it's, it's taken its toll. In a survey taken last summer of 5,000 flight attendants from 30 airlines, 85% said they had dealt with unruly passengers in 2021, with over half saying they'd experienced five or more such incidents, and 17% saying they were involved in an incident that got physical. One solution that's gaining traction is a federal no-fly list. Unruly passengers who've been convicted of in-flight offenses, that they'd be put on a special um, no-fly list and, and not be allowed to fly on any airline. According to the FAA, 70% of last year's passenger reports were related to mask-related incidents. So far this year, 65% of incidents are related to masks. Now, with in-flight and airport mask mandates slated to be lifted in March, is a national no-fly list really needed? Earlier this year, the CEO of Delta Airlines, Ed Bastian, wrote to the U.S. Justice Department asking the agency to create a national no-fly list for anyone convicted of disrupting a flight. Bastion wrote, A no-fly list of unruly passengers will help prevent future incidents and serve as a strong symbol of the consequences of not complying with crew member instructions on commercial aircraft. All the airlines over the last year or two, as these conflicts in flights and disputes over masks have ramped up, they've been administering their own lists of people that they won't. Uh, have on board anymore. Delta said it had put nearly 1,900 people on its list for refusing to comply with masking requirements and submitted more than 900 banned names to the TSA to pursue civil penalties. The concern is though that they don't and really can't share that information. So if somebody has caused a problem on a United flight and they can no, no longer fly United because of the airline's policies, you know, in theory, they can book their next flight on Delta where they may end up being disrupted again. Delta said that while such incidents of bad behavior represent just a small fraction of the overall flights on Delta, the rate of incidents on the airline has increased nearly 100% since 2019. Flight attendants are absolutely not willing to accept this as the new normal. So what they're saying is make it stop. You also see this in the fact that across the board, their flight attendants are just not willing to pick up the voluntary overtime hours that they were before the pandemic. And so the public saw that in many flight cancellations in the fall and even over the holidays. In 2021, the FAA said it initiated nearly 1,100 investigations into unruly passengers, which is more than the previous seven years combined. Flight attendants will say a lot of these incidents don't necessarily have anything to do with masks. You know, some of them involve alcohol and some of them just seem to defy all explanation. The Biden administration has voiced its support for the idea. Anything besides zero is an unacceptable rate. But not everyone is in favor of a national no-fly list. Recently, a group of Republican senators wrote a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland suggesting that such a law could infringe on civil rights. The Republican senators who opposed the letter you know, basically they argue that it would give the Department of Justice too much um, authority to create a list and there wouldn't necessarily be transparency and clarity into who would be on the list and that this really is something that should come through Congress. The senators wrote the creation of this list by DOJ would result in a severe restriction on the ability of citizens to fully exercise their constitutional right to engage in interstate transportation. The senators also noted that since most of last year's unruly passenger incidents were mask-related, the no-fly list would unfairly target maskless passengers. The senators wrote, Creating a federal no-fly list for unruly passengers who are skeptical of this mandate 
would seemingly equate them to terrorists who seek to actively take the lives of Americans and perpetrate attacks on the homeland. You know, they also complain that it sort of equates people who are objecting to the mask mandate to terrorists, um, which, you know, they say is unfair and overblown. You know, that's not quite exactly what Delta had proposed. You know, it's not necessarily that Delta had proposed everyone who won't wear masks should be banned from flying, but obviously it would be um, controversial. But how realistic is a no-fly list? Now that the unruly passenger rate has fallen since its dramatic spike last year, what's more, mask mandates, which were one of the biggest points of friction last year, are coming to an end in March. This is an issue that has been so politicized that people who want to wear masks and people who don't want to wear masks are both in conflict with each other. And so sometimes the aggressors on the planes are the people who are so angry that other people just won't follow the rules. The agency with the authority to extend the mask mandate, the TSA, has said nothing thus far about another extension. Last December, the TSA extended its mask mandate for another three months to combat the surge in Omicron variant cases. 